Welcome back to another video about surjections. In this video, we're going to pick up on the cliffhanger from the last video and talk about how to prove that a function is a surjection. So let's begin by reviewing the definition of surjection. So we let f be a function from a to b, and the function f is called a surjection if the range of f equals the codomain. So in other words, f is a surjection if for every y in the codomain, there exists and x in the domain such that f of x equals y. So with a surjection we're viewing a function from the codomain point of view. We're starting with a point in the codomain and trying to build a point in the domain that maps to it. In other words we're picking out a target that we would like to hit and then trying to find something in the domain that maps to that target point. Now we saw one special case where proving a surjection is really easy and that's when the codomain is finite. We can just simply go through all the points in the codomain and just find points, check through exhaustively to see if each point in the codomain is hit. But what happens if the codomain is not finite? Well that's where it gets a little tricky and so to help us with this I've set up the following general framework for proving surjectivity. Again this is really for the case where the codomain is infinite. And this is not always how you prove that a function is a surjection but it's helpful to start with this framework in mind. So if we wanted to prove that the function f going from a to b is a surjection then I'm going to start by choosing an arbitrary point from the codomain and very importantly I am I'm not going to assume that it is the output of my function. Basically I'm going to pick a point out of the codomain and then not even look at the function. The function has not entered into the proof yet. So choose an arbitrary point from the codomain and assume nothing about its relationship to the function that you're dealing with here. What we're out to do here is prove that this point is an output of the function. So it would be a disaster to start by assuming that it's the output of our function. So don't assume that the point you choose is the, an output of this function. Second Secondly, what we're going to do is determine a form for the point in the domain that maps to it. Now presumably before we do any sort of proof that a function is a surjection, we have played with the function and kind of come to terms with whether or not we feel that the function is a surjection. We might try some arbitrary points out of the codomain. Uh, for example, if the codomain is the integers, we might pick the number 17 and see if we can hit 17. And then we might pick 22 and see if we can hit 22. And then negative 5 and see if we can hit negative 5. All these examples that we do as data that precede the proof will help us do the proof by trying to find a general form for the input that goes to the target that we want to hit. So we're going to determine what that form is for the point that we're choosing in the domain and then we're going to just state this as a claim like I claim the following point in the domain maps to my target point. And then I'm going to prove that claim by doing two things. First of all I have to check or prove that the point that I'm claiming maps to my target actually belongs to the domain in the first place and we'll see something about that in a couple of examples. And then secondly, obviously what I want to do is prove that the point that I'm claiming maps to my target actually does map to the target. I'm going to do that by simply evaluating it into the function. So let's use this framework to do a couple of examples. So here is one of the concept check questions from the last video. Let's prove that the function that maps the rationals into the uh, integers that's given by f of a over b equals a is a surjection. So this function operates by taking a rational number which is a fraction of two integers with the bottom non-zero and simply returns the, the uh, numerator of that fraction. So why is that a surjection? So first of all I'm going to choose an arbitrary point in the codomain. I'm going to let n be an integer and I'm going to assume nothing more about it. So I'm going to let n be an integer and assume nothing about it relative to my function. Now what I want to do is find a point that maps to it. Now this is something over here that I might do before I start the proof. Like if I pick a random integer out, let's say the number 5, what might map to 5? Well lots of things could possibly map to 5. The most uh, obvious being maybe the, fun the uh, rational number 5 over 1. Um, certainly if I take that, that's equal to 5 and if I load it into my function I see that if I strip off the numerator I get 5. And so that seems like an obvious choice. You could also choose 5 over 2 for example. Lots of points map to 5. So we're going to do this. We're going to claim, we claim that, oh let's make it n over 2 just for fun, maps to n. Like I said, there could be a lot of things that map to 5 over here in my examples. 5 over 2 would be one of those. 5 over 1 would be another of those. So I've claimed that n over 2 maps to n. This is the general format of the object that I am claiming maps to my target. Uh, 
So I'm starting with a point in the codomain and working backwards in the domain to find something that maps to my target point. So I've got to do two things now. I have to somehow argue that the, tar the point that I picked out of the domain actually is in the domain. And then I have to show that this point here actually maps to M. Well, it's easy to see, and I won't write all this down, but just speak it out. It's easy to see that this is a rational number, that it actually belongs to the set of rational numbers, because N is an integer, and 2 is also an integer and is not equal to 0. So N over 2 is a rational number by definition. So this really is a point in the domain. And then I need to prove that it maps to N. And to do that, I'm simply going to uh, do a calculation. I'm going to take F and calculate N over 2. Now, how does, N, how does F work? It takes the input and strips off the numerator. Okay, so there we have it. So I've proven in one step that the point that I claim maps to my target point really does map to my target point. So I have to start with a point in the codomain and then build something in the domain and then prove that it really maps to the target. Let's look at another example of this, uh, which was the other uh, surjection from the concept check. Another function that maps the rational numbers into the integers, we're going, to, we're going to declare f of a over b to be round of a over b. So uh, this takes a over b and simply rounds it up. So is this a surjection? I claim that it is, and we're going to start by letting n be an integer. Just pick an arbitrary point out of the codomain and let's just see if I can find something in the rationals that maps to it. Now let's do a little playtime over here as well. I changed the color to green here. This is something you might do before the proof starts. So pick a integer, really any integer you want. I'll say 3. Now can I find a, func a uh, point, a rational number point that maps to 3? How does this function work? It takes the fraction and then rounds it uh, up to the next higher integer. So one integer that maps to 3 would be 3 over 1. Sorry, what rational number maps to 3? Now 3 it by itself is an integer which makes it a rational number. It could write it as 3 over 1. Now 3 over 1 is 3 and that rounds to 3. And there's nothing magical about the number 3. That seems like it might always work. So that I think is going to be my general form here. So I claim that the point n, let's say n over 1, I have to make the claim that the number that I say maps to my target point really belongs to the domain. And it's clear that it is, because n is an integer and 1 is an integer. 1's not equal to 0, so this whole business it belongs to q. So I claim that this point n over 1 in q maps to n. And this is going to be a real easy check here. How do I know? Well, let's take a look at it. So f of n over 1, by definition, is round of n over 1. That's just the definition of my function. Uh, this, of course, n over 1 inside the parentheses is just n. n is an integer, and so if I try to round it to the next higher integer, I'm simply going to get n, and I see that I have what I want. The object that I claim maps to n, I've proven really does map to n. So therefore, that function is a surjection as well. Here is a third example, and this is from an in-class activity that students in the Math 210 class at GBSU have done. So let's define a function d from the natural numbers to the natural numbers. That's defined by d of n is the number of divisors of n is a surjection. So just to see how this function works, let's play with it over here in the box. If I take d of, say, 6, how many divisors does 6 have? That's going to be the answer. Well, 1 divide 6, 2 divide 6, 3 divide 6, and th 6 divide 6. So d of 6 is 4. So we claim that this is a surjection, and uh, let's prove it. So we're going to let, let's say, k be an arbitrary natural number. If the codomain were a set that had a little bit more structure to it and I could rewrite k in some other form, I might want to do that. But here, the natural numbers don't really have much in the way of structure. We just know that they're positive integers. So I'm just going to choose an arbitrary element out of that set and then leave it alone. The function has not entered into the picture yet. Now what I'd like to do is build a point in the domain, which is also the set of natural numbers, that will map to k once it's put into the d function. Now one of the things that the class did, and this is certainly the case, is we proved or made a conjecture that if I take d and put in 2 to the k power, I get k plus 1. And that you can certainly see to be true because what are the divisors of 2 to the k? That would be 1 
2 to the first power, 2 to the second power, 2 to the third power, all the way up to 2 to the k power. And now, how many things have I just listed out? Well, there are k things in here, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to k, and then there's this extra 1. So the output of d of 2 to the k is k plus 1. Now, so I'm going to make a claim here. I claim, based on my experience with that lemma, that the number 2 to the k minus 1 maps to k. Now just to, con just to check here, I've, I've made my claim of what I think maps to k. Now I have to do two things. First of all, is this point right here actually a natural number? Okay, I've got 2 to the k minus 1, so I've got to be careful I don't go down into say a negative exponent here. So let's think about this. So first of all, is 2 to the k minus 1 in the natural numbers? Well the answer is yes. Uh, and that is because k here is a natural number. Okay, so k is a natural number. That means k is bigger than or equal to 1. So k minus 1 is bigger than or equal to 0. And so 2 to the k minus 1 is a, an integer. It's a positive integer as well. That makes it a natural number. Now let's think about um, whether 2 to the k minus 1 actually maps to k. So I can prove that here just by plugging that into my d function, 2 to the k minus 1. Now my formula over here that I conjectured says that if I put in 2 to the k, the output is k plus 1. In other words, if I put in 2 to the exponent, I get exponent plus 1. Now here the exponent is k minus 1, so I'm going to get k minus 1 plus 1 which of course is equal to k. So that last line there proves the main point of being a surjection and that is that if I take this point that I claim maps to k uh, just by running the function through I see that it really does map to k. So that proves that this particular function, the number of divisors function, is really a surjection. Again, it's hard to come up with this proof unless you play with the problem first, and especially if you don't have this conjecture over here about putting in powers of 2 into your d function. So this is something that takes place before any sort of proof begins. Now lastly, I have one more example here, and that is that we're going to prove that the function f that goes from the real numbers to the real numbers given by f of x equals 5x minus 1 is a surjection. And I'm bringing this up because it raises an important point about the role of the codomain here. So we're going to, sh we're going to assume, we're going to let, uh, let's say y be an arbitrary real number. Okay, I'm, I don't know anything about the function at this point. I'm going to choose y out of the codomain and don't touch the function at this point. I don't know that y is actually an output of this function. I have to prove that it is. So uh, what do I think maps to y? Well, let me do a little playtime over here and let's see what I think. Um, if I had 5x minus 1 equal to y, what could I possibly possibly put in for x that would give me y? Well, if I just solve this equation for x, I think I might get an idea. Well, if 5x minus 1 is equal to y, then 5x is equal to y plus 1, and so x would be y plus 1 over 5. So this is telling me that if I chose a y and I wanted to find an x that hits it, one thing that might hit it, maybe the only thing in this case, is this point right here. If I, if I set up this equation and assumed that this equation was true and backtracked, this is where I would end up. So that's the basis for my claim. I claim that y plus 1 divided by 5 maps to y. I would not have any basis for that claim or any idea about it if I didn't do a little bit of playtime first over here. So two things to check. First of all, does y plus 1 over 5 actually belong to the real numbers? And the answer is going to be, of course, yes, y is a real number. And so y plus 1 is a real number, and therefore y plus 1 over 5 is a real number. So I'm just going to say yes because y is a real number. Okay, now the main uh, point here is that does y plus 1 over 5 actually map to y? Well, let's try it out. What is f of y plus 1 over 5? Well, according to f, I'm going to change color here to match the color of my function upstairs. That would be 5 times y plus 1 over 5 minus 1. So that's the function, and there I'm putting in my proposed point. Now let's just do the math and see how this works out. The 5s will cancel out, and I have y plus 1 minus 1, and that gives me y. So indeed, I have chosen a point to put into the function that really does hit the target. 
and so that function is a surjection. Now one last thing I wanted to point out here though is if I just changed something slightly and made this a function that maps the integers to the integers, change nothing else, keep the same formula, then notice something. This would still be, this would definitely be a function from the integers to the integers. If I, it's a function, there's no splitting. If I put in an integer, I'm going to get an integer as an output. But notice it would not be a surjection anymore because this point that maps to y might not be an integer. For example, if y were equal to 2, if I started with 2 in the uh, integers here, change that, then y plus 1 over 5 would not be in the integers. And so this function would fail to be a surjection if I change the domain and codomain. So again, whether a function is a surjection or not is heavily dependent upon what the codomain is and to some extent what the domain is as well. So those two sets really matter. So there you go. There's several examples of how to prove a function as a surjection. Remember, if the codomain is finite, this is all very, very easy. You just do an exhaustive brute force search. If not, then uh, now we have a, a nice logical framework for helping us set up these proofs here. So enjoy, and thanks for watching.